Ashley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, July 14th to Saturday, July 20th. Okay, so last week was, I'm going to say, semi-quiet. Now, I say that with a little bit of hesitation because our inner realms have been popping off. Now, the reason being that last week was, quote unquote, semi-quiet is because, of course, we came out of that new moon in Cancer. We had to sit in that. That was the pivot point. That was the breaking point. That was the shifting point, pulling ourselves out of the pain, the trauma, realization, reflection, back on the inner child wounds, back on the mother wounds, back on the family dynamics and where it is that some pain and trauma programming very much rooted in our upbringing, in our familial exchanges, and recognizing where it is that that programming has kind of run its course. We want to heal. We want to do better. We don't want to hold on to the old. We want to move on to the new. And so that new moon really kind of rocked us. We had to sit in it. And this is what this past week has been. Yes, we had Venus complete her time in Cancer Energy. That was kind of the heart activations that we needed in order to boss up in our relationship dynamics, really put our foot down, really implement those boundaries and kind of begin the ending, the closing chapter that many of us are watching take place in familial structures, in romantic relationships, in friendships as well. We just had Venus move into this Leo energy here on the 11th. So we're still kind of acclimating and adjusting to this particular heart energy. Leo, of course, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. We are bold and brave and courageous. It might take us a little bit of time to actually get to that point, but we're about to put ourselves out there in a big way. We're about to do what is right for us. We're about to stand up, stand out, be seen, be heard in this new form, in this new image, in this new version of self. Of course, we've been building to the first quarter moon taking place at 22 degrees, divinely scripted number in Libra and energy that will pop off here on the 13th. Now, as I'm coming to you live here Friday evening, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Secondly, we're still approaching this building point. The first quarter moon of any cycle is a critical point of consciousness, of realization, of choice, of decision, of action. And a lot of the pressure that is building is kind of activating our fears, our doubts, our insecurities, our agitation, our frustration in order for us to reach that breaking point where we finally say enough is enough. I'm moving on. I have to advocate for myself. I want peace and harmony and balance in my life again. And this is how I am going to kind of lay the land, draw the line in the sand, implement those boundaries in order to protect thyself. So we're all still kind of heading towards this pivot point that is definitely coming at us here on the 13th. So what do we have going on this week, you may ask? Well, first of all, let me just give you the lay of the land as far as how the week is going to go. The first part of the week is very, quote unquote, quiet. And again, I say that with hesitation because nothing has been quiet as of late in the cosmos. Um, the beginning part of the week is a little bit quiet because we're building to some wham, bam, thank you, ma'am kind of energies towards the end of the week. First of all, this is the last full week of cancer season. This is also the last week that Mars is going to be in Taurus energy. And of course, we're building towards the second full moon in Capricorn that will be popping off at a 29 degree closing out cancer season. That's going to be taking place on the 20th. 21st, and then, of course, on the 22nd, the sun is moving into his rulership in Leo energy. So I know that kind of puts us into not even this week, but next week's energy. But I need you to be very aware that, you know, come Tuesday, Wednesday, we are piv pivoting in a big way. The energy is going to be building in intense kind of ways. And that the latter part of this week coming at us is definitely going to be pressurized and way more intense than the beginning of the week is. I also feel the need to kind of give a special mention. Uh, July 15th, which is, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, it's Monday. July 15th, we have Mars and Uranus coming together for another conjunction. So the first time we had Mars and Uranus conjunct was back in January of 2021. They popped off in this Taurus energy at six degrees. The second time they interacted with each other was August 22, 
and that was at 18 degrees. And this is going to be the last of three and the last of three that will be taking place in Taurus energy. And this is the last time that we are going to see Mars and Uranus in this Taurus energy for essentially most of our lifetimes. The next time that we're going to have Mars and Uranus pop off is going to be in Gemini energy. And that is going to be a totally different ball game. However, that's not coming at us for another couple of years. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because typically speaking, historically speaking, there's usually a major, major shift in the collective that happens with Mars. Again, the warrior, if you will, the ruler of action and passion and desire and how we go after things that we want, we need, we desire. It's also anger and frustration. And Uranus is the great awakener, shocking revelations, pivot points, spontaneous bursts of energy. Again, Uranus wants freedom, wants liberation, wants new levels of awareness and consciousness. And when these two get together, typically and historically speaking, there's some kind of shit show that takes place on the collective. Usually where war and anger and frustration and a major change is needed. And again, you have to have a breakdown before a breakthrough. And this is very much that kind of energy. So am I trying to fear monger? 100% no. Am I saying be very mindful with your energy this week and the events that are going to be popping off in the collective? 100%. There's going to be an extra layer of triggers and activations put out in the cosmos in order for us to all lose our cool, in order for us to all lose our shit. We don't want to do that. We have to stay away from the egoic programming. That beast program is the problem. And so with this level of awareness, with this heads up, you should be able to navigate these particular energies in the best kind of way. So definitely look out for that popping off here on Monday. Okay, so before I get into the ascension symptoms and some semi rants, I just want to take a moment to thank you. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping emojis in the comment section below. I also want to thank those of you that have reached out to let me know that YouTube is really messing with my channel again. I mean, I say this pretty much every week and I don't know, I'm, sh I'm sure it's not the fact that people don't believe me, but sometimes y'all need to see it for yourselves in order to really understand the struggle here. I've had people tell me that you cannot even find my channel when you type it in. I've had subscribers for years, still have to go look for my videos. I have people telling me that they get so far into my videos and then all of a sudden YouTube freezes. I have people telling me that they have left beautiful comments for me and then they come back to see why I haven't replied and then there are no comments that YouTube has essentially deleted those comments. I myself haven't been able to see the notifications to a lot of the comments that are being left. I myself have not been able to respond to a lot of the comments being left. And that makes me feel very bad because I don't want anybody to ever think that their energy, their effort that they are putting forth to actually connect with me is being ignored. I hate that so much. And so I just want to thank you for continuing to be here through all the effery that YouTube is definitely putting out there into the world, especially where my channel is concerned. And I know a lot of truthers out there are experiencing the same kind of things. Again, kind of touched on this last week. A lot of it is just due to these new AI things that are coming out, the algorithm that they're testing for AI. But like literally speaking, to put into numbers, usually I get six to 700 views on a particular video that was normal for me but also that was a downgrade because i was used to having like i'm gonna say 1500 to 2000 views on videos this was like i'm gonna say two years ago so if you go back and you look at all my videos it's been a while since i had that kind of uh viewing but what I'm getting at here is that typically speaking, my new norm, especially for this year, was around six, 700 views per video. And now I'm like 250, 300. So again, it's a major ding towards me. And you know what I'm trying to do here for the channel, it's a major ding to my subscribers that aren't even seeing my content. Um, it's just super frustrating. And I just wanted to thank those of you that have reached out and kind of given me the confirmation that, yep, you're seeing the effery on your side now that I've been talking about for many moons. And yeah, I just appreciate y'all sticking with me through it all because it is not fun. It is very frustrating. 
So yes, YouTube sucks. And I hope that, you know, your little YouTube process of checking all the words that I'm saying in this video, I hope you pick up on that. I think you suck YouTube. Okay, good. Let's move on. Okay, so this week we are wrapping up cancer season. So again, if you haven't gotten your cancer season e-guide, I'm going to recommend you do that. We still have a couple of events popping off in cancer season before we shift over to Leo season. And of course, that means that the Leo season e-guide will be available for download probably midweek coming at you here this week. There is going to be a full moon guide being released for this second full moon in Capricorn. Again, we kick cancer season off with a full moon in Capricorn at a one degree. This is going to be a full moon Capricorn at a 29th critical karmic degree, which means that we are wrapping up, providing an ending and a closure, a completion point to not only just a lot of the things that we were struggling to deal with back at the beginning of cancer season around that first full moon, but we're essentially closing the door on a lot of the power struggles that we've been having, a lot of the, I'm gonna call it materialistic aspects that we've been dealing with. What does that mean, Marley? That means relationships are coming to an end, um, careers are coming to an end, housing situations are coming to an end, the power struggle that has been limiting us from being our true versions of self, the happiest versions of self that we could be. There is a karmic cleansing, karmic closing that is taking place with this full moon and Capricorn. So obviously there will be a full moon guide available for download as well. I don't know if it will be a video or if it will be a workbook, my voice will dictate that when it comes time to sit down and do it. Um, but there will be something. So yes, if you're into all of those moon guides, you can get that on my website. If you want to subscribe, get them all. Of course, you can do that for a little bit of a cheaper price. And if you want to jump over to my Patreon, you're going to get all of my content, everything that I put out there if you are a Gold Tier member. I wanna thank those of you that have jumped over to my Patreon to test out the previews on the paid content over there, slowly but surely building up that community as well. Um, we're gonna be just waiting for some of these new features that Patreon has promised me that they're coming out with that are very similar to what we have here on YouTube, meaning, I'll be able to do a video and do a live chat over there with that community with some, let's call it more specialized content that I wouldn't dare try to release here on YouTube. Um, so I'm just kind of waiting for some of those features to be activated and that might change the game on my delivery system on what it is that I can talk about, what it is that I can share and how it is that I can interact with my people, with my community over there as well. So again, the last reminder that I want to give you is if you haven't listened to your July Zodiac forecast, I'm going to recommend you do so. We are wrapping up cancer season. There's still major events to take place here in July. We are coming in a very back-to-back -back serious energy shifting situation here towards the end of the week. And you can figure out how all of these energy shifts are going to impact your life first and foremost by listening to your Zodiac forecast. Okay, so that is all the homework that I wanna cover. Let's dive into some of these ascension symptoms. So we're all going through difficulties. We're all going through struggles. However, I would say if you're being real and raw and vulnerable with yourself, you are in a much more better, stronger, empowered position now than you were at the beginning of cancer season. Again, a reminder, we come into cancer season, we are so connected and attached to the past, to the old, that we are just living in the past at that point. It wasn't until we had that new moon in cancer that we pivoted, we pulled our attention out of the past, we realized what we had to do in order to nurture and nourish ourselves back to a place of health and wellness, the boundaries that we had to implement in order to protect ourselves, the structures, the routines, the habits that we had to build for ourselves in order to make us the best version of ourselves, while also protecting ourselves emotionally from a lot of the karmic contracts that we're really trying to close out at this particular point in time. So of course, this being the last week of cancer season, we're a lot more empowered. Now, does that mean that it's less difficult? Absolutely not, but we know what we're doing. We're hell bent damn well and determined. We know who we're cutting out. We know what we're moving on from. We may not be that deep in the process of actually cutting those cords and moving on, but we've arrived at that within ourselves. The karma 
of cancer season is putting us in a major revelation point to understand that if we continue to do what it is that we've already done, we're only ever going to get what it is that we've already got. Many people have been hoping and praying for change and here change is knocking on the door and we're curling up in a ball and pretending that there's nothing happening out there. We have to get up. We have to answer the door. This is going to be the week that we're going to do that. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's now in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in this Leo energy, which means that she's ready to fight for what matters, for what she values, for what makes her happy, for what she needs in her life to feel safe and secure and balanced and happy once again. There has been this inner realm revelation while Venus was in cancer energy of where it is that the wounds from our inner child wounds, the wounds from our generational trauma, where all the wounds, the pain, the suffering was definitely being illuminated. We've had a major shift within us and our heart space, a major change of heart. And now in the Leo energy, we're going to be gifted with all of the energetics needed, being bold and brave and courageous and confident enough to put ourselves out there to express this new version of self in a brand new way. And with that comes new wants, needs, and desires that are definitely more heart aligned than they are egoically aligned, which is a great win for us. Because again, we're shedding the skin of the old version of self. Does that mean that you cast that old version of self away like it was a bad part of your life? Absolutely not. If you are turning a blind eye to who it is that you've had to be in certain parts of your life for survival, then you are essentially whittling away your ability to stand in your power. Integration is the key. You don't cast parts of yourself away. You love them enough to become a part of you. You appreciate them enough to make them a part of you and you give them the attitude of gratitude for getting you through that particular chapter of your life. You do not cast parts of yourself away. You bring them closer, you bring them into you, you make them a part of you. So this empowered energy is coming because we're finally realizing what it is that we have to do. We're gaining in clarity. Now, just a reminder, a couple weeks, if not a couple of months ago, we were begging for clarity. Now we're getting clarity. And for many of us, it's coming in the form of realizing what we don't want, what we're no longer willing to experience or tolerate, what it is that we have to cut off and let go of. And of course, that is an ending in a closure, a completion point that is going to come full circle under this full moon in Capricorn. So although we are feeling like we're on the forward progression, the forward movement, realistically, we aren't going anywhere fast. We can thank Mars for that. Again, in that fixed Earth energy of Taurus really slowing our roles down again, pushing us inward, understanding what we have to build and cultivate within ourselves before we can take action out in the physical realm. We're building in motivation. We're building in determination. We're building, I'm going to say in excitement and inspiration, although many of you are going to come back and say, I haven't felt excited or inspired in years. Well, it's time for us to split that particular narrative for us to start getting excited and inspired over the little things again. Just a reminder, our mission is to bring heaven to earth, meaning we know it's a struggle out there. We know there's some darkness, there's some heaviness, there's some ugliness out there, but we know better. We are pure love, pure light. Our goal, should you accept this particular mission, which I'm sure you have, or else you wouldn't be alive walking the earth plane at this particular, I'm going to call it juncture in the evolution of earth and humanity. Our mission is is to find happiness, joy, excitement, inspiration in the little things, in all that we do. We are here to channel that light into the physical form, into this earth plane. So I know it's a very difficult task when things are falling apart and there's pain and trauma activations and struggle after struggle after struggle. But again, this is just an earth school. You are being tested in your ability to not allow your physical realm, your physical reality to dictate your happiness, your joy. So this is a test of the mental plane. It's a test of your emotions. It's a test of your ability to harness that oneness, that love, that wisdom, that knowledge in the physical form and bring the happiness, the joy to this physical earth plane. Now there's going to be a lot of heart activations. We're still talking about Venus. Now, granted, in comparison with Venus in Cancer energy for the last month-ish, 
those heart activations were kind of hitting in a different way. It was hitting that pain, that trauma trigger. It was hitting the inner child, it was hitting the familial exchange. It was really hitting our self-esteem and our self-worth. Well, now Venus being in this Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac, the pride is going to start showing through. We are going to be wearing our pain, our wounds as badges of honor. And that is very much the mood, the attitude that we need to get in. We have a shift of our heart space, new wants, needs, and desires that match the vibration of this new version of self. But we still have a lot that we have to kind of move through, meaning... The Leo energy requires us to really embody our unique individualism. Okay, let's talk about the Aquarius energy that sits across from this Leo energy that Pluto is currently retrograde in. The Aquarius energy pushes us to fit in. The Leo energy pushes us to stand out. So because Venus is kind of, you know, going through her own empowerment type of healing journey, she is realizing where it is that her people pleasing, her want, need, and desire to fit in has compromised her uniqueness, has compromised her individualism. She has basically hidden, dimmed our, her whole light away from the world in order to fit in. The Leo energy is encouraging us to step out, to stand out, to be seen, to be heard. There's an, a spiciness that comes with Leo energy and I'm sure if you've been scrolling through, you know, these social platforms, you're going to hear the very generic um, concept of Venus being in this Leo energy. I see it myself. All of these quote unquote astrologers claiming, oh, romance is key. Love is going to be the main mission. You know, in Leo energy, we're here for romance. We're here for spiciness. We're here for fun. Now, although that may be true, I do have a huge problem with people kind of looking at Venus as she only cares about relationships because realistically speaking, guys, we're building the relationship with our authenticity. The relationship with self is first and foremost right now. We have to know who it is that we are. We have to be able to dance to the beat of our own drum. We have to be able to step up, to stand out and to, you know, wave the weirdo kind of flag. Yes, Venus is about relationships, but it all stems from the relationship that we have with thyself. This new version of self just emerged. We have to spend some, I'm going to say time, kind of whining and dining ourselves, if you will, to really put into perspective how it is that we have kind of put ourselves low on the priority list in the past, where it is that we have to stop those people pleasing qualities, stop trying to dim our light, stop trying to fit in and really embrace standing the F out in our power, in our authenticity. It is time for us to leave our very unique signature on the world. And so the heart activations that we're going to be experiencing this week, again, heart activations could be your heart having a irregular beat, could be gas pains, could be tension in the chest space, could be coughing fits, whatever it is that awakens the vibration, the energy in our chest space. Speaking of which, with these heart activations, we can kind of, I'm going to say, expect a little bit of those coughing fits in order to get up a lot of the phlegm. Now, I know phlegm is not enjoyable, but here's the thing. We're still in cancer season, so we're still out in the, let's call it ocean of emotion. We're still treading water. Um, we, because Venus just moved out of the cancer energy, um, we are kind of drying ourselves off where the heart is concerned. And the fire energy of Leo is definitely helping to speed up that process. But in the process of kind of, you know, letting go of that water weight, we do have some congestion, some phlegm that is very, very connected, very kind of deep seated, if you will, in our lung space. And again, doing the breath work practices that we should all be doing at this particular juncture, realizing that our breath is what gives us power. We should all be very connected to doing those deep breathing practices and exercises that again is going to kind of break free a lot of those gunky, phlegmy, coughed up patches that of course hold emotion. 
This is the detox part of cancer season, which means that we are going to have to really, you know, heave at some point, whether you choke on your own spit or choke on water or choke on food, whatever, you will find yourself in a random coughing spurt that is going to produce some sort of phlegm, some sort of mucus being coughed up and expelled from the lung space. We need that to happen. But the heart activations are going to continue to happen. We are going to see a very, very deep contrast between A, sitting in fear, doubt, insecurity one moment, and then B, rising above all that stepping into our pride, stepping into our boldness, our bravery, our courage, our confidence. That is how the evolution of kind of, you know, putting to sleep, closing the door, releasing a lot of those heavier emotions and stepping into the more powerful ones. That's how we go about it. So we do have to expect some heart activation, some heart activities to break us away from those old attachments and really kind of catapult us, launch us into this new path and direction where we are now pursuing new wants, needs, and desires. So with that coughing fit, there is going to be that the throat clearing as well, which I think kind of goes hand in hand. I kind of want to give you the whole like sinus cavity connected to the throat space, connected to the lung space. It is that particular highway in the body that we are going to see a lot of activity with throughout the course of next week. Again, the sinus cavities connected to the third eye. The third eye is picking up on subtle energies, on the shift, the vibration within ourselves and the world around us. So that is going to trigger and activate, you know, some head pressure, some sinus pressure. Maybe you're going to have post nasal drip. Maybe your nose is running. Maybe you're going to have sneezing fits, whatever the case may be. We have that throat clearing situation going on in order to kind of expel some of the mucus that's going on in that particular highway. And then of course, down in the lung space, we already kind of talked about that, but those, those three chakras, if you will, are going to be the main focus over the course of this week. Now, let's talk about the lower back. So we kind of talked about this last week. We've been talking about the root chakra for quite some time because essentially the root chakra, which is at the very base of your spine, like your butt, if you will, um, that is where the egoic programming, the B system is actually stored. That's our survival programming. That's what connects us to the physical world, to the physical body. And because... We are going through this major shift in identity and major shift in our heart space. And we are closing out some very long and drawn out karmic chapters. We do have a lot of pain, a lot of spasming, a lot of rigidity, a lot of tension stored up in the lower back. Now, hopefully it just stays there. We could see a situation where sciatic nerves are kind of popping off and taking that pain right down the back of our legs and into our knees. Again, knees are where we store fear. And many of us, although we're trying to kind of push through the fear right now, the fear is still very alive and well. And because we are going to be put in a particular position over the next couple of weeks to actually physically take steps, to make moves moving forward, we are going to have a lot of illumination, if you will, in the tension, in the rigidity, in the strength of our lower limbs. When we talk about structure, our, our bodily structures, we have to talk about Capricorn energy and we are in a season right now. Yes, we're in cancer season, but what sits across from cancer season is Capricorn. They share the axis of stability, of safety, security, of authority. And with the full moon and Capricorn coming up, of course, we're gonna be rattled in our physical body structures, our bones are going to be kind of, you know, cracking and popping off in ways that we don't normally experience. But all of this, again, is to kind of stir up the fear, stir up the doubts, the insecurities that we're holding in our egoic beast programming right now. And where it is that we have to push through that, kick through it, karate chop it, if you will, in order for us to move on and move forward. I want to talk about the dry, sore, burning eyes and lips, and also the ridge of your nose, your nose holes, if you will. Now, I want you to think about being in the bathtub or being in the ocean or being in a lake, basically being 
being in water for too long, we get puffy, we get wrinkly, we get sore. It makes no sense that we actually become, I'm going to say, dehydrated while hydrating, but it is a thing. And I feel like our eyes are definitely going through this situation where we've been exposed to water too long. And for those of you that have, you know, shed a pretty profound amount of tears throughout cancer season, very much the vibe, that dry stinging sensation of our eyes. Now, a lot of that is because we are starting to see a little bit further into our path, into our plan. Uh, we're starting to be able to strategize. We're starting to be able to see things a little bit more clearly, but again, what we're kind of being shown right now is not favorable to us. And the reason for that is because we have to illuminate the ugliest parts of our lives in order for us to realize how to beautify them and to make them prettier and more aesthetically pleasing, if you will. Again, you've been hearing me say for the longest time that our mission right now is to create a realm in reality that not only looks good, but that feels good. And you have to be aware of the parts that are ugly, that are dark, that aren't working in order to flip the script and figure out how it is that you're going to improve and better these situations. And so right now our eyes are really taking a hit because again, it's becoming more and more clear what is ending, more and more clear what we are bringing to a closure point, what we do have to let go of, what we do have to accept, what we do have to come to terms with. And for the most part, that doesn't really feel good. And so we're going through this dry, stinging, burning sensation with our eyes, also with our nose, because again, just think of when you have a cold or your nose is running and you're rubbing your nose all the time or, you know, blowing your nose, how the, the, the rims of your nose holes gets red and irritated and sore. Very much what is happening throughout the course of this week as we kind of, you know, are on the last leg of having to swim in the ocean of emotion and we are eagerly now trying to swim towards land. We will hit that land when the sun moves into Leo energy on the 22nd. Again, listen to your July zodiac forecast for all of those particular transits. Um, but right now, we are still swimming. We are just a swimming. Now, let's talk about thirst. So, yeah, we're out in the middle of the ocean. We have been choking on water. Um, you would think that we are not really that thirsty because again you could just open your mouth and drink a little bit of water and not be thirsty but we are thirsting for information for knowledge for change we are basically just waiting for this aha moment for this epiphany and i will say that even though the mars uranus conjunction most likely has more of an impact on global events than it does in our individual lives we still have these particular um, planets impacting our lives. And this could be the point where an epiphany comes into our mind, where the clarity comes and we're able to take immediate action in some way to really pursue this new idea, this new um, insight, if you will. So we are definitely thirsty and we are feeling that thirst. So we are craving for hydration in our physical bodies, but we're also craving, again, that knowledge, that attention to the plan, to the strategy that we now have to kind of throw ourselves into. And so I would say that the thirst is definitely going to be a strong force of craving here this week. Um, and with that Mars and Uranus pop off, we could definitely have a lot more information to be working with throughout the course of this week, especially as we approach Mars moving in to that Gemini energy there on the 20th, right before that full moon in Capricorn. So we definitely have a lot going on. And again, as I previously mentioned, the beginning of the week, much calmer, cooler, more collected than the ending of the week. But nonetheless, we are going to receive some seeds, if you will, at the beginning of the week that are going to fully blossom into some realizations, into some clarity towards the end of the week. So with that thirst, we have to expect to have some dry mouth situations, you know. Um, I would say that even if you are drinking and eating, you're still going to have that morning breath blahness taste in your mouth. That dry mouth is definitely an indicator on where it is that we're looking for change. We're looking for something to quench our craving and it's not here yet. 
Now, hopefully that means that, you know, it's a short lived dry mouth situation. Um, but we also have to consider when we're talking about the mouth, um, mercury is of course in Leo energy and that's a fire energy. And right now the fire is drying us up in a big way, thus the dry mouth. So we talked about how this is a wrap up week, how this is a closure week, how this is a completion week. But let's uh, let us also talk about how the grief comes in when something is ending, even if it's something that you've been looking forward to, even if it's something that isn't taking you by surprise. Sometimes, you know, we can spend months, if not years, sometimes thinking about what would happen, what our lives would look like, how we would think, how we would feel when a certain ending closure took place. Maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's a job, maybe it's a, a house that you're moving away from. There's some sort of element where karmically speaking, we are bringing something to an ending to a closure. Of course, we have to balance out that emotion. We have to give ourselves permission to move into the shadow work, to sit in the grief if there's grief there to be sad in, to sit in the sadness if sadness is knocking on your door. There is a certain release that needs to happen with emotion. And we talk about, you know, all the different heavier emotions that require that release. There is this releasing, this detachment, this letting go of energies here this week that may actually bring up a lot of emotion that you weren't counting on. That's okay too. Let it come, let it go. We talked about how sleep has been just a mystery for many of us. We've been talking about how the detox process in our physical bodies that take place while we sleep is kind of creating a sweaty situation at night as of late. I do suspect that that is going to continue into this week. I would also say that the closer that we get to the end of the week, more and more of us are not going to be able to sleep comfortably we're not going to be able to sleep through the night. If you're getting any more than four hours, consider yourself lucky and blessed at this particular juncture, but that could definitely change up as we move into some of these energies. Just considering the fact that Mars, who rules over our physical energy, he's moving into Gemini energy on the 20th, and that is the mental plane. And so for many of us, we're not gonna be able to sleep at night because we're thinking, we're planning, we're strategizing. We are, we are just so fixated on coming up with a new, you know, a new aha moment, if you will, that we may not see the opportunity to move into those deeper sleep stages. So all I'm saying is, is that with a full moon, Mars on the move and the completion of cancer season coming at us towards the end of the week, I would say that we're going to have yet another pivot point in our sleep situations and circumstances as well. I think that for many of us, I know cancer season has been pretty hard on the guts. We've been going through bubble gut situation, feeling nauseous and seasick, if you will. Um, considering the fact that we've been kind of, again, floating out in the ocean full of emotion, there are so many emotions that get triggered and activated in cancer season, and that has a direct impact on our guts, considering the fact of all the nerves that are connected to our digestive system. and. I know if you're stressed out, you don't feel like you want to eat or you're just throwing yourself into too much food. But again, that would be a trauma pattern that you should take a good look at. Um, that would be a vice. That would be an escapism coping tactic that you should really take a look at. Most of us should be stomach sick to the point where we're not eating regularly. Now, do I promote that? Absolutely not. But it is exactly what has to happen. Again, how many of us were told that you don't go swimming right after you eat? And here we have been swimming for close to a month now in cancer energy. Many of us have not been eating the heavier meals that we are normally accustomed to. We have not been eating the foods that we normally crave. There has not been an overwhelming amount of food or want needs or desire for food. I feel like because our stomach is definitely doing flip floppies as we kind of enter into this detox, purging, closure, completion, days or a week, I feel like we're just going to have a hard time digesting whatever it is that we're putting in there anyways. It's going to be very much like we're on a roller coaster. I feel like we have been on an emotional roller coaster, if nothing else, through cancer season. And why would it calm down when we are coming to the end of it? It is going to ramp up 
It is going to intensify. There's going to be more pressure on our digestive system. And of course, all of that is going to make for some bubble guts, for some acid reflux, for a lot of urgency coming up one way or going out the other. Now, in relation to a lot of the gas bubbles or bubble gut situations that we could find ourselves in, and again, on top of the cancer energy putting us in a digestive shit show situation we also have the solar plexus right underneath our rib cage that is going through a renovation as well this is building up in willpower building up in our uniqueness building up in our life force energy because that in itself could create gas or bubble pains i want you to pay attention to your shoulder blades now in your physical body when you have a lot of gas stored up in your abdomen you are going to have referred pain to your shoulder blades There's going to feel like there is nerve issues in your shoulder blades. But also on an energetic scale, the shoulder blade issue is basically an awareness of some past pain and traumas that you're currently trying to get rid of. And it is the weight of the world that you've been carrying on your shoulders when a lot of it doesn't even belong to you, let alone is your your responsibility to actually carry. A lot of this is in relation to, again, the family situation, the family dynamics. We're in cancer season that rules over the home and the family. It rules over the generational trauma. It rules over the inner child. It rules over the connection that we have to the mother role, to that nurturing role. And many of us have taken on that particular role and responsibility with people that we should not be taking care of in that way. May I remind you that when you throw yourself into a role where you're very intertwined with somebody else's life, that you're also interrupting their karma. You're also depriving them from the experience, from the life lesson on how they can learn how to stand on their own two feet. This is one of the downfalls of cancer placements is that we are so willing to throw ourselves into other people's lives. And again, it's a coping mechanism so that we don't have the energy or attention left to actually focus on ourselves and our own damn problems. But again, cancer season and cancer energy is very karmic. And again, we're coming to the realization right now that we've been forcing a lot of karmic contracts and karmic chapters that really weren't meant for us. And so the weight that's been weighing very heavily on our shoulders, the roles, the responsibilities that we're now bringing to a completion point that we're letting go of, that we're releasing is going to really be illuminated in the tension, in the pressure of those shoulder shoulder blades. So it is time for us to kind of take that weight, put it down. Okay. Many of us carrying around emotional baggage that doesn't even have our name tag on it. We're carrying other people's emotional baggage around and we're complaining about how, you know, we're tired of carrying it. Well, guess what? You don't have to complain. You don't have to have somebody say, hey, I'll take it. You yourself just need to realize you just put it down. Just put it down. Walk away from it. It's no longer your responsibility. Probably wasn't your responsibility to begin with but you claimed it like it was your own until again, you've reached a breaking point where you no longer want to carry that emotional baggage around with you. What I'm getting at is pay special attention to your shoulders, to your upper arms, to the neck. All that tension is going to be illuminated. And again, very much the breakdown versus breakthrough energy. We have to feel that pressure. We have to feel that intensity. That's the only way that we can truly appreciate it when it's alleviated. When we're able to kind of, you know, feel that release, that's how we put into perspective how heavy it actually was. We don't notice it when we're carrying it around to a certain degree. We don't know how heavy it is. We don't know how long we've been carrying it until, again, we're beat down broken where we realize something's got to give and we start unpacking. Okay, what have I been carrying around that isn't mine to begin with? And so the choice to mentally say, okay, This suitcase doesn't even have my damn name on it, okay? Why have I been carrying it around for the last 10 years? Oh, because my mother's name was on it and I felt like I didn't want to leave it behind or my family's generational trauma was stored in there and I'm the one who's supposed to be breaking that particular chain of trauma. So I just felt like I had to carry that suitcase around. 
It's up to you, right? It's just like when you go to an airport. You could be picking up strangers' luggage and carrying it around with you, but it's not yours. It's not yours to own. It's not yours to carry. It's not yours to claim. So we are all finding ourselves in that particular juncture in this calendar right now as we're closing out cancer season and preparing to move into the, I'm going to call it lighthearted energy of Leo season. We all have to just stop, take stock, take an inventory of the baggage in which we've been carrying, flip the name tags over and only walk away with the bags that actually have your name on it. That is going to help you in this next chapter. So guys, I think that's all that I want to talk about, all I want to bring to your attention for this upcoming week. Of course, again, just a reminder, it's going to start off a little bit calm, a little bit slow, and then things are definitely going to ramp up as we reach the ending point of this week. We have some major shifts coming at us, some major closures coming at us, some major revelations coming at us, and we are about to pivot in a major, major way. So I thank you so much for tuning in. I thank you so much for showing up for me, but mostly I thank you for showing up for yourself. I thank you for being here. I'm sending you so much love and we'll talk to you soon.